Up next, we have Phil Gomes, who is the Senior Vice President at Edelman, leading the firm's Blockchain Center of Excellence in advising companies on digital communications. Phil also serves at the, as the Communication Director for the Chicago Blockchain Center. Phil, please join us. Great. Great. Thank you uh, for the um, MC-induced applause. That's great. Um, Okay, so uh, as was introduced a little bit earlier, I work with Edelman, uh, the world's largest PR firm, and I should say, I'd love to be able to say, proud sponsor of this fine event. Uh, it's, been, it's been great so far, I'm sure you'll agree. Um, so one of the things that we do at Edelman um, is that we do something called the trust barometer, right? And so the trust barometer is the, um, uh, essentially a, a broad study that we've been doing for the last uh, 18 years or so in terms of looking at trust in principally four principal types of institutions, NGOs, uh, government, uh, business, and the media. And uh, typically this is polled uh, uh, people in, uh, now we're up to 28 countries, um, and uh, we, we poll the uh, general public and then a group that we call the informed publics. Uh, what are the informed publics? These are people that tend to have um, uh, high, uh, the top quartile of incomes tend to be highly educated and tend to be what we like to call media attentives. They tend to uh, be, have voracious media consuming appetites. So um, we're gonna focus on that latter group today because uh, what somebody or a group of somebodies uh, in one of our offices decided to do uh, two years ago was sneak questions into the trust barometer panel uh, for a set of those people that were in essentially asking them questions about uh, seven uh, high interest technology categories. This could include IoT, self-driving cars, and our favorite topic that uh, brings us here today. So um, like I said, we've been doing this now for 18 years. You can see up on the board here that there has been um, a series of trends over a period of time uh, that we've been able to uh, uh, unearth and, and, and really just tended to show the zeitgeist of that particular time. So you'll see the trust barometer started in 2001 with the rise of the NGOs. A lot of you might remember the Battle of Seattle, uh, as, it was, uh, as it was then known. You can also see kind of the rise of social media. You can see it around uh, 2006 or so, uh, the emergence of the person most like yourself as the person that you're more likely to trust. Uh, more so than authority and that sort of thing. Uh, in 2011, we see a swing back to authority figures. And uh, now in the 2018 panel, what we saw was uh, what we started calling uh, the battle for truth, right? And a couple highlight findings from the master study before I drill down into blockchain. And the, the two findings that I thought were particularly interesting and germane to this group. Um, so number one, the notion that business is expected to lead. And uh, you can see on the right-hand side there that uh, our panelists, this is a, a global figure, uh, said that a CEO's job number one is to make sure that the company is trusted. Uh, and that's a finding that is well above you know, maintaining share price and delivering value to, to shareholders. So num job number one is for a CEO, make sure the company is trusted. And I suppose the thought is that everything else just kind of flows from there. Uh, but also, Look at the left-hand side there, 64%, uh, those are the people that said that CEOs should take the lead on change and ought to do so uh, before the government uh, decides, to, uh, decides to step in, which of course fits in with a, you know, a, lot of, a lot of my own beliefs and a lot of the beliefs of the people here that you know, let's try to fix this all together uh, before a large you know, overweening uh, group uh, known as a government you know, comes in and, and makes you know, sweeping decisions using very, very broad strokes. Um, finding number two, um, uh, we'd like to talk about fake news a lot and that sort of thing, and maybe perhaps the idea that we're not trusting the media as much as we did, maybe that's a fairly uncontroversial thing to say, uh, but I'm gonna stand up here and say it anyway. Uh, about, so basically 22 out of the 28 countries that we polled uh, actively distrust the media, right? So the way we look at it is that if the trust level below hits uh, 49% or below, we call that distrusting. 50 to 60% is kind of in that mushy middle area. And then finally, trusting, you have those top three uh, countries there. 
But it was really phenomenal to us that fully 22 out of 28 of the countries that we polled um, said that they, uh, that they distrust the media more than anything else. So 2018's broad recommendation uh, that we went into the marketplace with, and uh, we debut this master study at the World Economic Forum in Davos uh, every year. It's kind of our, our, the firm's tent pole uh, intellectual property event is that uh, number one, we're never gonna have trust if we can't agree on the truth first. Uh, but number two, um, ad advancing a shared understanding of the truth is essential. And this is, uh, these are the two points uh, among others, but these are the ones that when we uh, brought the trust barometer to the public, these are two main points that we you know, charged into the marketplace of ideas with you know, these two ideas pretty much uh, on our shield. Um, so then I have to ask, um, what is blockchain technology if not a mean to deliver a shared understanding of truth, right? So there's a, there's a species of pundit that runs around that says, you know, blockchain equals truth. And I say, well, well wait a minute, wait a minute. It's trans you don't need to oversell it. It's transformative enough to say that blockchain technology delivers a shared version of digital truth. And that already makes a lot of sense. And that already makes, you know, the promise of that is already, is already, is already light years ahead of perhaps where we are now. Um, so, all right, let's talk a little bit about trust in blockchain companies. So like I said, uh, for a good many of the folks that uh, received the Trust Barometer panel, again, we're talking about the informed publics, right? We defined that a little bit earlier. Um, we asked them, what is your trust in blockchain companies to do what's right? And within blockchain, you can also insert IoT and self-driving cars and mobile and that sort of thing. So let's take a quick look. So what did last year's findings tell us? I'm not gonna go into that too deeply because you know two data points really isn't enough to define a trend. Um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna summarize this by saying last year's message was essentially saying, trust me because I put my trust in companies uh, that help make it possible to do business with, you, with me without actually having to trust me. Um, what we found, the reason why we said that is what we found that there was a, there was a nice correlation uh, between uh, the top five countries that tended to trust blockchain the most in, in some ways even more, trusting blockchain even more than the master category of technology, which I thought was really interesting. Um, but among those five, uh, you had uh, four comp uh, three components plus China of what uh, Deloitte calls the Mighty Five, M-I-T-I-V. That is the uh, five countries that uh, Deloitte believed would uh, take, start taking up the slack when China started to uh, uh, engage in higher value manufacturing. And those countries are Malaysia, India, Thailand, uh, Indonesia, and Vietnam. Now, we don't poll Thailand and Vietnam. Uh, but what we saw was a strong concentration of those countries plus China. And so we said, okay, maybe there's, maybe there's something there. Maybe there's a, a faint signal or, you know, as we say in this presentation, a light under the door. So this year's message says that a technology that purports to reestablish the goalposts of trust still has a lot of work to do. As you saw in the earlier slide, there's a lot of headwinds pushing against trust. Um, and we'll see the effect of that a little bit later on. Um, so... Trust in blockchain companies to do what's right. So we got global, Latin America, EU, APAC, BRIC, and North America. So that's the global finding. Um, <laughs> don't let those scare you. There's a build here. <laughs> uh, so Latin America tends to be you know, fairly high. EU, not so much, but they're edging from distrusting territory to moderate trusting territory. Uh, APAC tends to be fairly high, but it's also Asia Pacific tends to have a very high trust in technology anyway. Uh, look at the BRIC countries, um, here uh, largely led by India and China. Uh, we see our, our highest findings, um, generally even to down. And then let's look at North America and what the heck happened there. Um, so let's look at that a little bit. Um, but as we saw a little bit a little bit earlier, North America, and particularly the United States, um, we kind of have low trust in a lot of things, uh, especially after the last year. Uh, so you can see this. <laughs> bit of an eye chart here, but uh, you can see a blockchain in green there. You find that North America tends to have depressed trust in all of these technology categories from mobile to IoT to AR, VR, and, and, and blockchain. Um, and this by itself may be somewhat discouraging, and it's not it's certainly not my goal to discourage a blockchain conference. Um, but there are a lot of lessons here. So let's look at the general findings. Um, 
what are the threads of commonality that run through uh, the best performers here? Number one, regulatory support and marquee level projects are contributing to the greatest increases in trust. Um, so the top five blockchain trust gainers, look at that, Singapore, Australia, Argentina, Sweden, UAE. And what do we find in that? Well, there are some really nifty pilot projects that seem to have really strong government backing or otherwise there have been uh, full-throated announcements of support from some governments. We see here Singapore, uh, Australia, of course, is going to be um, utilizing blockchain in the Australian Stock Exchange, the ASX. Uh, Argentina, uh, some of you might have been surprised by that jump there, but if you've seen the Argentinian pace over the past several years, they're probably interested in anything different. Uh, but they're looking at, um, you know, the biggest futures market is looking to join into the blockchain fund, and then we find Sweden is looking at land registry, as we've seen many, many other countries um, and governments look at. And then finally, hey, let's look at Dubai, uh, everything from land titles to, I mean, there's even talk of a emirate-wide loyalty program. Uh, so not just for a restaurant or a chain of hotels, but uh, indeed emirate-wide. So definitely they're all in, and that's the thread of commonality that moves through the biggest jumps year over year. Um, the five countries with the greatest trust in blockchain companies, uh, you see them right here, and you find that uh, some of the other components have been uh, replaced by uh, UAE and Singapore, and again, those dramatic jumps were uh, really, really important in terms of breaking into that top five. And as a matter of fact, if you actually, if you look into the previous slide, um, in three of those countries, it, that jump was enough to swing from distrusting territory to trusting territory, which is really interesting. Um, so if we go through that and there. Um, so um, the other finding is that trust in blockchain companies, um, it, it's not immune to the macro trends. So um, I heard some wry chuckling when I talk about uh, trust over the last year in the United States. Um, trust in darn near everything cratered in the last year. You can see NGO, business, government, and media. Uh, trust in blockchain companies in the United States uh, fell at about the same rate. So that tells me that um, you know, we have a lot of work to do as marketers uh, because we're seeing this technology, we're promoting a technology, and we are very passionate about technology that is trying to redraw the boundaries of trust. And so I think a good uh, sign of progress would be if trust in blockchain companies were in fact counter cyclical to some of these drops. Or at, least, uh, or at least steady. So some recommendations uh, moving forward is, number one, I encourage people to ground themselves in first principles. So um, I'm not one to engage in argumentum ad satoshidum, right? <laughs> I think if you've been in any Reddit forum, as soon as somebody quotes Satoshi Nakamoto, they're either really brilliant or they've, by de facto, maybe even lost the argument. But it's important to go into the first principles, which is like, okay, he, he or they set up a... Um, uh, you know, a, a, a dichotomy between what is trust and what is proof. And the problem with typical systems is that it's based on trust rather than proof. So that's a good place to start, I think, is to reground ourselves in that white paper. Um, number two, I think successful companies are going to have to define, describe how they are redefining trust. I think it's uh, very easy to be somewhat... Um, you know, to engage in the art of compression, which certainly this presentation is, um, in terms of figuring out, okay, well, you know, trust us because this is a great technology that is, you know, not only t highly tamper-resistant and consensus-based, but becomes more secure as it grows and as it, as it moves. We just have to be better as a community, I think, in describing how that trust is redefined. Um, I think 2018 also needs to be the year of non-crypto, at scale blockchain deployments. Um, I get very, very excited at some of the amazing pilots that you see out there, especially in supply chain. As a career communicator, I can tell you uh, how many times um, real visibility into a supply chain would have helped me, uh, particularly in crisis-related and recall-related assignments. And I think uh, perhaps even led by the Australian Stock Exchange, I, I think there needs to be some at scale deployment in order to increase that trust. And I think that's pretty imminent. And then finally, I'm going to say that, you know, working with regulators, I think it's necessary. And I think in the past, uh, when industries have said, you know, we're fine government, you know, we can self-regulate, and then that self-regulation fails, and then the government sweeps in, and then you get a Sarbanes-Oxley, and you get all of that. 
Um, what's been missing this whole time is a ledger technology that actually puts some teeth in the concept of self-regulation. And I think that's one of the uh, largely untold promises of what we see in terms of um, you know, the, the growing of consortia in this space that are really passionate about bring, you know, bringing a whole bunch of companies in their industry under that particular tent. Um, I think that this is going to be core to increasing trust uh, in this category in the future. And I think it's incumbent upon all of us to uh, really understand um, you know, how we can demonstrate uh, as industries that um, you know, we can provide that self-regulatory layer, give it teeth, and start to answer the question about that we saw a little bit earlier as to you know, what's being expected of business leaders today, what's being expected of CEOs. Trust is number one, and they want business to lead uh, before uh, government comes in again with that very broad stroke approach. And so uh, with that, uh, that's all I have. Uh, I am the penultimate person keeping you from lunch, but if uh, you want to uh, discuss any and all of this, I am, uh, track me down, I'm easy to identify. Um, and uh, as you can tell, this is probably my favorite topic. So thank you very much.